everyone, I'm Candace Harris with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Clay Ross from Capstone Games, and we're checking out Ride the Rails. Clay, yeah. nice to see you. <laughs> Can you tell us about <laughs> Ride the Rails? Yeah, so this is our new release in our Iron Rail series. And what this is, um, it's a series of games related to the train networks that were developed uh, back in the 1800s um, around the world when steam-powered locomotives was the best form of transportation. So uh, we're just taking a dive into uh, that that kind of uh, time frame. And so Ride the Rails is number two in our series. The first one was released last year called Irish Gage and featuring in Ireland. And <laughs> Ride the Rails just came out um, and we're based cool. in the United States. Um, nice. So. Yeah, so this one is for three to five players, and it plays in about an hour. Um, and here it is set up on the table real nice. Um, and it's really cool because uh, it's based in the United States. And what you're doing is building railroad uh, across the United States. Um, the, the cities on the map each have a passenger that's looking to ride the rails. And uh, because... Uh, trains are, are new and cool and exciting. Um, these passengers <laughs> want to travel to all these cities that they can now get access to. Um, so the further that you travel them uh, across the United States, the more points that you, the player, will earn. Um, also, with the nature of this game, it's it's got a stock mechanic where you'll have ownership of the different kinds of railroads. And as you use these different railroad trains, um, the value of that company will go will increase um, as you can see on this Ooh. player board here, there's six different colors uh, of railroads and you can own whatever you want. And uh, for each um, railroad that's used, it's going to increase its value and, and pay out to its shareholders. So you could be paying out to yourself as long as, uh, as well as other people that have ownership of that railroad. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So how does so, a, a turn work? Yeah. So the game's played over the course of six game rounds. Um, each round is broken into three phases and you'll do each phase in each of the six rounds. Um, and once, once you're done, the game's over. Um, so the very first phase that you do is you select a railroad and at the beginning of the game. Yeah. So the railroads are across the top of this board at the beginning of the game, the red and the blue railroad are the only two railroads available. So you're free to choose. And this is what I really love about this game. Um, it is a stock ownership game, but there's no bidding. So uh, mm. it might be intimidating for people to go through auctions and whatnot. Um, <laughs> right, so right. This, yeah. So you, you are able to choose whichever railroad company you want that's available um, in the beginning of the game. Again, red or blue are available. So you'll take, okay. you just simply take one of those locomotive tokens and place it on your player board to signify, hey, I have ownership of that. So here, okay. um, the white player has taken a red uh, locomotive. Yep, and cool. they just place it down there. And so everybody does this um, in reverse player order. And then okay. going into the second phase, this is the exciting part where you get to actually build out those railroads across the United States. Um, and what's really cool, um, Eno Tool did the artwork for this. And each city on the map is a hex. Um, it'll have a color of the appropriate railroad that can start in that city. And the red and the blue um, historically started on the East Coast. Um, so you're free to choose whichever city it wants to start in and you can start building a track for that railroad company. Um, depending on the number of players, we'll tell you how many locomotives you can place out there on the map. Um, okay. The more players, the fewer that you can place. Um, okay. So yeah, you're able to to build track to different cities. You want to connect to as many cities as you as you possibly can. That's that's typically the goal, unless you're going to play a little defensively and just build in the middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and it looks like it, it looks like you guys have a a really cool round tracker there at the bottom of the board that um, breaks down the player count and how many trains you could put out in phase B. The board yeah, is gorgeous. Each, Sorry. Um, yeah, so in, in this is again, Eno Tools, brilliant graphic design. Once you've learned this game, 
you don't have a reason to really pull out the rule book. It's all there on yeah. the, the game board. And just like you mentioned, awesome. the, the phase tracker tells you, okay, I'm in phase B. This is where I get to build track. How much track can I build? What are the limits in certain, because certain spaces have uh, train limits um, and stuff like that. So, and all that information is on there. Um, so it's, it's really handy. Um, so once everybody's gone around and, and built their track on the map, we go into the third and final phase of the round, and that is the ride the rails phase, um, appropriately named because you're going to <laughs> <laughs> you're going to take ride these the passengers. Rails. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Candice. Oh no no no! I was just saying ride the rails. <laughs> I know. Like so, it, it gets pretty exciting because um, as you as as the players commute, like it, it's kind of a community effort where you get a you get to build and dictate where these uh, uh, trains are placed on the map. Um, you're going to pick a passenger that's connected to any train route and you're going to send them across the United States to these different cities and you get to, you get free roam on which, uh, which cities that they get to go to so long as that there's a train that is connected to that city. Um, and for each uh, company that you use to go to different cities, uh, the little uh, disks at the bottom right of the map will tell you all the way at the bottom. Yeah, you can use those to count how many cities um, each uh, company was used to, to transport a passenger. And typically you wanna deliver as many as you can because the uh, white hexagon marker there keeps track of the total number of cities that that passenger traveled to. Again, okay. these, tra these passengers wanna visit as many cities as possible. It's new, it's, it's exciting. They wanna get on a train and, and see all these cities. So the more, cities they go to, the more points you're going to get as the player. Um, so gotcha. let's say, yeah, in this example, they used a couple of the red and the orange tracks. Um, whoever delivered that passenger, um, so Candace, if you were to had, had delivered this passenger, you would get the points for the hexagon marker, how many cities that passenger uh, with, has visited, and then okay. everybody will score for their shareholder value of those railroads, the red and the orange. So in this case, if you didn't have any orange railroads, um, you can still use the orange railroad link, but whoever has ownership of the orange railroad will get points because again, that railroad has been used. Um, so it's kind of a nice um, effect of, do I want to join this railroad now? Like, do I want to get ownership of it? Cause I might be using it when I deliver passengers. So I want to capitalize on getting those points. Um, right. So, okay. So yeah. So if, um, if 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 Nikki were to let's say connect the orange train line to the red train line through a city, you could technically take a passenger through a whole like, you know, pass through one city almost, and hit 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 five or six cities, huh? Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's great because then you've earned uh, five or six points in that case, um, as well as the. Um, the trains that were used. So if you used a red and an orange train and you had uh, stocks of both companies, that's even more points for you. It's a, it's a great way to get points that way. Um, yeah, and passengers can jump different colors. Like if they travel over to, uh, I think that's Nashville over there where the red and the orange meet, they can change trains from, uh, if they were on orange and they wanna use the red train to go all the way to the East Coast, that's totally fine. They can always, like each city is kind of like a train station if you think of it as that where they gotcha. can change trains. But uh, yeah, so um, one thing I do want to talk about is there's all these other colors of trains. And in the beginning of the game, you only start with two. Um, each round that you play, so after we were done with that ride the rails phase, we would go to round two and a new okay. train company is introduced. Um, in this case, in round two, the orange company comes available. Round three, okay. uh, yellow, and then purple and so forth. And what's really fun is each of these companies has their own special um, starting requirements. Where can they start on the map? Uh, for example, the purple train, which comes out in round four, the first mm -hmm. time that that train is built or, or used to build track, it starts in one of the four West Coast cities all the way on the west side of the map. And gotcha. so it helps you kind of plan for these super long routes across the United States. Um, all right. There's some, bo yeah, there's some bonus cities for connecting to like Denver. Um, Chicago gives you some bonuses if you land in there. 
Um, and then you have, it wouldn't be a train game in the United States without the transcontinental bonus. So if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you connect one of the West coast cities all the way to the East coast cities through different colored trains, you're going to get a bonus of 12 points. If that's done in a city, if the connection is anywhere else besides a city, you get eight points, but it's still a, it's still a fun thing to try to get to, uh, cause that, that 12 points is a pretty big swing. Um, so there's some little fun things sprinkled in the in the map for you guys to explore when you get it. Really cool. Yeah, so. and it, it plays in an hour. Um, yeah. Looks like some really interesting uh, route building and decisions. I love uh, I love anything that has kind of a stock market element where you're grabbing shares and manipulating the value of how how much each one scores. That's yeah. one of my favorite mechanics. It's I agree. I really love that aspect of it. Um, another thing I like about this that's not immediately apparent is each of those companies, uh, like for example, the red one on the map sure. there, the supply of trains starts dwindling and it starts being reduced as you use its locomotives to build track. So the more track you build it, that's great. But now it has this huge network and you're, and you're thinking as a player, ooh, I want to be an investor in red but there's not as much <laughs> red tokens available. So yeah. it's this give and take. Yeah. <laughs> so they start going away. And once red is gone, then there's no more investing in red. There's no more building for red. It's it's done. So you want to use you'll you'll during the ride the rails phase, you'll try to put passengers on the red train as much as possible. So gotcha. Yeah, there's there's some fun things to explore in there. And so, each yeah, player is yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, each player is uh, when they do the ride the rails, you're just moving one passenger per player. Yes. You're, yeah. And you can choose how far that passenger goes. Sometimes it might be beneficial, depending on your, your game situation, to do uh, a shorter route than what you could really end up doing. Um, it just depends on how far you really want that passenger to travel. So. Yeah, right, because you. You, don't, you don't want to get, yeah, you don't want to help somebody else score a bunch of points. So you want to kind of exactly. <laughs> watch that. Um, hey, Clay, we have a question from uh, Fallen Owl. Uh, how is this game, Ride the Rails, different from Irish Gage? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we get that yeah. a lot. And uh, Irish Gage is more of a, uh, it's in Irish Gage, there, it's you're, you're, you're building routes, uh, you're purchasing or auctioning off stock. Um, and you're paying dividends in a s similar way. Um, hold on a sec. Sure. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay, um, so I'm really sorry. Uh, I just had okay. a phone call come in and for some reason it was connected to my headset. <laughs> um, <laughs> So Irish Gage, yeah, you're, you're still doing similar things. However, um, the dividends are, it's a probability system where you're gonna draw cubes out of a bag and it'll determine which cities will actually pay dividends if your railroad is connected there. Additionally, um, there's auctions in that game where you, and in order to acquire a share, you have to auction off a share. So there's, there's a lot of subtle differences as you're playing that game and it has a completely different feel. This one is more pick up and deliver with route building um, embedded into that uh, pick up and deliver mechanic. Um, it feels very, this game has emerging alliances where like you and me, Candace might start out by building the blue railroad and we've got this super awesome blue railroad built across the United States. But then towards the end of the game, you've started investing in another railroad, like the purple one or, or whatever. And I might've chosen the yellow railroad. And so we're going to start, I'm, I'm probably going to try to cut off your purple railroad somehow or, and get it away from the, the blue railroad or, or whatever. But there's, it, it's just different alliances form in this game, which is really, really fun to explore as, as the game goes on. That's, that's awesome. And how does, um, how does the turn order work? Cause I see the turn order track down there. Um, but how does yeah. that change? I'm assuming from round to round. It does. And I got to, uh, say major props to my buddy, Tim Coles, uh, who has been helping with capstone a lot. And, uh, he's the one who came up with this turn order mechanic, um, for this game. 
basically, um, at the beginning of every round, you're going to determine who goes first. And the first player will be the, the player with the least amount of points. And then whoever has the most will go in last. Um, so you, you order turn order from least amount of points to most points. Um, that's really, really helpful for catching people up because um, if somebody's consistently hammering away with solid deliveries of passengers, they're going to have a big lead. This mechanic kind of dwindles their power um, yeah. as more railroads become available in the game. So it's it keeps it fresh throughout the entire experience. Cool. Well, thanks, Clay. Yeah. Uh, this is Ride the Rails from Capstone Games. Thank you again, Clay. Yeah.